Animation is something that surrounds us daily, even though we may not realize it. Whether that be animated movies or TV shows to even animated commercials, animation is something that has surrounded my life and I'm sure many of your lives as well. Growing up, I was always drawn to animated movies and TV shows, and I became so enamored with them. Whether that was watching Nickelodeon or watching animated Disney and Pixar movies, I loved watching them and I found them to be so entertaining. And all my life, throughout trying to I've loved drawing, but throughout trying to figure out what I want my career to be, I never felt like drawing would be enough. It wasn't about until my sophomore year that my friend told me that he was going to be majoring in digital animation. It was then that I realized that I could be making these animations myself and working in the industry that has so greatly surrounded my childhood. I suddenly became way more interested in animation and everything that may involve it. Animation finally made me feel like I found something to do in my life in a way that suits me. In our current society, we often consume the content around us and we never go through the, the trouble to learn how to create it ourselves. The medium of art and animation has enlightened me to see the value in someone who creates content for others to view. Animation can tell stories in a unique way that no other type of media is able to do. Animation is, makes the impossible possible and makes the impossible possible <laughs> and, and no other type of media is able to do. Making the impossible possible is something that can be done through animation, and that is something that has fascinated me so much about it. In the Bible, Genesis 1.27 states, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God uses his own creativity in the, in the creations he makes, and the image he had when he created us. Because God is so creative in his own creations, I hope to create my own unique stories through animation. I hope to make the impossible possible and express my own creativity and imagination through the, through the stories that I will make in animation. And after realizing that animation is something that I want to do in my life, I wanted this experience having the mindset that animated, animation is something very simple. However, I quickly realized that it's exactly the opposite. Last semester, I had the opportunity to go to the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design and, and, attend, and visit a class. I was looking for opportunities for college, and I had the opportunity to sit, to sit in an animation class. It wasn't what I expected at first, as it was solely a workday for the class, so the teacher put me down at a tablet to animate something. When I sat down in front of that tablet, I realized I had no idea what I was doing or what to even animate. I sat there for a few, for a few minutes wondering what I should do and how to even begin something like an animation. The teacher came over to me, and she showed me the basics of what to do, so I decided I should start with something simple. I decided to start with the ball bouncing. Even something so simple as a ball bouncing, I had struggled where and how I should begin to even animate this. The teacher again came over to me and she, she threw me a basic path to what the ball should follow. Now I had a basic idea of what I should do and how to begin this animation. I began to animate each frame of the ball bouncing, trying to make each circle perfect. And if the circle wasn't good enough, I would erase it. The teacher once again came over to me and she suggested something that I never would have thought of myself. She suggested that when the ball hits the ground, you may get squished down a little, but after the ball comes back up from hitting the ground, you may get stretched out a little, and doing something so simple could add so much more life to the animation. And finally, after about 30 minutes of slowly trying to animate a ball bouncing, I finished it. <laughs> and it isn't really anything super exciting or special, and while it has many flaws, this experience made me realize more than before how fascinating this is to me, and how much I want to begin doing this myself. Even something so simple as a ball bouncing, these simple concepts can be taken into something much more complex. And after this experience, I realized way more than before that in animation, you can truly make anything come to life in a unique and in an impossible way. My love for animation grew even more after I read The Animator Survival Kit by Richard Williams from my capstone experience. I had gone into this book knowing very little about animation, but the style that Richard Williams writes in makes you easily understand the concepts and principles of animation. This book taught me that animation is so much more than just being able to draw. Animation is all about timing, spacing, and a lot of logical thinking. And animation can turn out so much more differently depending on how you time and space everything. In animation, there's even a whole section on walking, and changing something so simple and minor in a walk cycle could change the whole thing completely. I even began to look at how everyone walks differently in the world around me. <laughs> and while they are very simple in this book, they can be taken to a much more complex level. A quote that stood out to me in this book says that, the animation medium is very unusual, but can accomplish actions no human could possibly do, and make it look convincing. I come to realize this many times throughout my capstone experience. There's no other art medium out there like animation, and that is something that has fascinated me so much about it. 
You can create actions and things that are physically and humanly impossible while still making it look convincing to the audience. There's no creative limit in the possibilities that you can create for animation, and animation finally made me feel like I found the perfect fit for me. And while I found animation to be the perfect fit for me, I realized that it has many of its own challenges as well. Animation requires a constant skill for good communication. I never realized that animation, something like animation would require something like good communication, but it is a main aspect of the field. In the field of animation, you are most likely to be working within a team, and the only way to get a good animation done is through good communication. A quote Richard Williams states in the book, The Animators of Alpha that animation is usually a group effort, and one has a seamless constant interaction, both competitive and cooperative, with the cut and thrust, highs and lows, political factors of complaint and inspiration, all the tensions and anxieties, rewards and excitement of group production. An animation isn't able to have without good teamwork, cooperation, and a lot of good communication. I never considered that something like animation would be so involved with other people when you're sitting at a computer all day animating something. And while I realized that animation is something that I want to do in my life, the amount of interaction with others in the design process is very intimidating. Communicating and being confident in myself constantly will prove to be a challenge for me in animation. Communicating in front of others is not my strong suit, so this will be something I most definitely struggle with myself in animation. And creating something, whether that be woodworking or animation, means that you pour a part of yourself into that creation. Showing that creation to the world and those around you for them to view means that you're being vulnerable by showing that part of yourself that you so greatly poured yourself into. I've always had the fear of standing up in front of others and openly sharing my work and ideas with them. And having people criticize your work, which you so greatly poured yourself into, isn't easy. I hope to gain the confidence and eloquence that is required to be an animator in the future. Animation is something where you can make your own story, and it has many of its own challenges, with the majority being the huge amount of communication that comes along while working within a team. And while communicating within a, within, a team, within a team has many of its own challenges, it has many of its own blessings as well. Communication can be very difficult, especially if you are in agreement with each other. However, your team will be there to help you if you are struggling. If you are struggling with motivation or not knowing how to move on with an animation, your team will be there to help you give a new perspective on your work. This can be true of anything that requires teamwork. If you are Working on a, on a team with other people on a project, consider being helpful to them and give them constructive criticism as it is needed. If you are working on a team with other people, you would want your team to do the same for you. It can bring about new ideas that you may have never thought of yourself. Your team will be there to help you with suggestions on how to improve the project, and in this case, animation. Your team is not there to judge you in any way, but exactly the opposite. They are there to help you give constructive criticism as it is needed, which only helps you improve in your work and in yourself. Being malicious and unhelpful in any way would only be unprofessional. I had the opportunity to interview Sean Brown, who is the head of animation at the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. He also said that communication is a huge part of animation. If you, he said that if you're not communicating, you could be having a problem and no one knows. That can jeopardize hitting the deadline and all kinds of other stuff, where if you just communicated it, you may have gotten help, you may have gotten past the problem, and everything was fine. There can be so many problems within animation if you aren't communicating properly with your team. You can completely risk the project if there is no proper communication. Your animation can go completely downhill with no proper communication. Animation also requires a constant skill for being constantly creative. And constantly being creative can be very draining. Working in a field where you're required to constantly be creative can be very challenging, keep, challenging to keep motivated. I had the opportunity to interview Kathy, who is who has worked for a few different television animation studios and has even worked for a few different shows on Cartoon Network. One of the things I asked her when I interviewed her is, how do you keep motivated if you don't feel like being creative, and what can inspire you? She responded with, that's something I'm still struggling with because I love animation, and sometimes I feel that it's a love-hate relationship, which is how I can tell that it's something I'm passionate about. I realized this many times throughout my experience, and this really impacted me, because the constant motivation to produce creative content may be something I have struggles and challenges with, I know I can get through it because I'm passionate about it. A lot of this requires perseverance through the times that I do hate it, because in that moment that you may hate it, it doesn't mean that you always will. This really impacted me because I've struggled with this so much a lot, so much of myself in my life. Although knowing and remembering this, I know that I can persevere through the times that I do struggle with motivation. And in the future, I know that I will have hard days where I don't feel like being creative, but I know that I can get through it because animation is something that I'm passionate about. 
I hope to grow in this way in the future and as an animator and, a per and as a person and persevere through the challenges that I may face. The unique thing about animation is that it never gets old. Sean said during something during my interview and that impacted me. And he said that, I tend to get bored with jobs when you run out of things to learn because most jobs there's only so much you can learn to do for your job. And while this is very likely true of several professions, I think this is definitely true of animation. The unique thing about animation is that it never gets old, and that is something that has fascinated me so much about it. Nothing, you will never get bored in animation, and nothing will ever get old, and you, because you can make anything and create anything that is possible. There is always something new to learn, and you are never doing the same thing, which is something that has come to make me love animation so much. Now, consider taking a simple circle, and one is going at a constant speed. And consider taking another circle, one that starts off slow, speeds up, then slows down again to a stop. And if you take these simple concepts of a simple circle, you can and begin to imagine all the different movements that can be made possible. You can already begin to add a certain character and a different kind of expression to the animation. Something immediately begins to change as soon as you give some kind of expression and story to the animation and change the movements behind it. Imagine all the different movements that can be made possible as soon as you change the movement from something so simple as a circle as soon as you, be, as soon as you add some kind of expression and story to it. However, if there is no story in animation, then animation will not be good in any way. Sean said something during my interview, and he said that he was saying that there are so many beautiful animations out there to look at, but, but they are not good in any way because there is no story. I, the majority of animation comes down to the story. A, a story needs to be good in animation in order for it to keep the audience captivated. And while there are so many beautiful animations out there to look at, a lot of them aren't good because there is no story to them. Sean said that, I think they can both be really successful, they can both be total failures, just depending on the studio that makes them and the level of quality they put into it, and the story that's behind them. A good animation includes something that is pleasing and beautiful to look at, as well as having a good story. You need to find the perfect balance between these two in order to make good animation with a captivating story for the audience. And while finding the perfect balance between these two may, may be challenging, once you find that perfect balance, you can truly create something that is unique and impossible, while still at the same time convincing. An engaging story and animation involves bringing the simple to life and making the impossible possible. And while I will most definitely struggle with these challenges to create an animation that has both of these qualities, I hope to endure and persevere through these challenges as an animator. Patience is also a big virtue of animation. That I realized this more than before when I was working on the animation of Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. You can spend so much time on a 10 second animation trying to get each frame perfect. When I was working on my animation, I spent each, half an hour trying to get each frame perfect. I realized way more, way more than before how much it is required to have the virtues of patience and a large attention to detail. <clears throat> because patience is so challenging, it is so and it is so time consuming, this will be something I most definitely struggle with myself in animation. Through this, I learned that in animation you can't make everything perfect. <clears throat> I'm personally, generally being creative in anything, we can all be perfectionists and want to get something just perfect. I'm personally a perfectionist myself when it comes to drawing, and I have the desire to make everything perfect. Being creative in anything will only make your life harder trying to get everything perfect, and it will only stress you out way more. Kathy said something during my interview which impacted me, and she said that you need to learn and handle something that may not be perfect. This is especially true of animation, and being such a perfectionist, getting anything in on time, including an animation, can get in the way of a deadline. Discovering this, as much as I struggle with this myself, I need to learn and handle something that may not be perfect. It's okay, sometimes you need to learn and handle something that may not be perfect in order for it to fit the deadline, and it not being perfect is okay. Kathy later then said, as an artist, if you get content, that means there's something wrong. You should always be growing. Discovering this, as much as I struggle with this myself, being such a perfectionist, finding new ways to grow and learn in animation can be especially useful in this field. The new thing about animation is that it never gets old, and you can create anything and make anything possible. Art generally is very important to have around us in our daily lives. It can make us appreciate something so much more. I, had, I was able to go to the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design and attend an event there. 
The event was like a class, and the teacher was talking about a concept that wasn't necessarily for animation, but can still be very useful. <clears throat> you, I took pictures, and while attending the event, I learned something new. <clears throat> Even though this information wasn't directly related to animation itself, this can be still be very useful for animation. I had another service project that fell through many times, but I'm still glad to have help with it. There's a new Genesis Center at our school, and I helped arrange the artwork that will be hanging in the room that will be designed by the laser cutter. And while this isn't very directly related to animation itself, it can, the slightest art in a room can bring so much more life to it. <clears throat> the slightest art in a room can make it so much more lively and welcoming. Animation, or yeah, something so simple as art, can bring so much more life to everything. And without it, something wouldn't be so creative or so welcoming and lively. Animation can bring the same kind of feeling to our lives. When we watch an animation, we feel something almost magical inside. As we are watching the impossible being brought to life, and while at the same time making it look convincing to us. And now, when I watch animated movies and TV shows, I have so much more appreciation for them and the people that make them. Animation truly isn't something that is easy, and requires much patience, eloquence, and communication. It can bring so many stories to life in a unique and an impossible way. Animation surrounds our lives and has so greatly surrounded my childhood, and I'm sure many of yours as well. I loved watching them, and I found them to be so entertaining, and I loved imagining something that in no other way would be possible. And while I thought that animation would include solely just being able to draw and have some skill in art, I quickly realized through my experience that it is exactly the opposite. <clears throat> animation has many of its own challenges, and I hope to persevere through them myself in my own career. Persevering through something, even in animation, means that you're passionate about it. <clears throat> There's nothing to ever stop learning in animation, and you can make the impossible possible in a unique way, which is so fascinating to me. Animation finally made me feel like I found something to do in my life, in a way to suit others, in a way to glorify God. Just as God is created with his own creations, I hope to create my own unique stories through animation. Animation can tell stories in a unique way that no other type of media is able to do, and I hope to create my own animations for something that has so greatly surrounded my life.